Guardians of the Galaxy? Who are they? Let's find out. Live from the YK Studios in Adelaide, Australia, it's the Pop Culture Spread. Our world is facing an unstoppable threat. Send in the Guardians. What the hell? I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. Yeah! August 1st. So here we are. A thief, two thugs, an assassin, and a maniac. Who are you? We're the Guardians of the Galaxy. Who? Forget it. Guardians of the Galaxy. In theaters August 1st. Welcome back, guys. Welcome to another entry into our Marvel retrospective series. I'm Jason. This is Rick. Hey, guys. How are you? Today, we've got a Cracker Jack show because we're talking about Guardians, Guardians of, of the, the Galaxy, Galaxy. the 2014 release. Yeah. Now, Rick, wow. Obviously, we saw this film together. We did, yeah, as we do. It, was a long, it feels like a long time ago, but it literally was, was only it? three years ago. Yeah. Around, around this time this year, actually, yep. come out in August in 2014. Yeah. So, yep. there you go. What were your memories leading up to this film? To be, I had no idea what any of these characters were about, or the storyline, and how it was going to be. I saw the trailer, yeah. um, but I was thinking, oh, okay, well, what direction is Marvel going to go? You know, Marvel haven't really disappointed me with any of their movies. Mm. So, you know, a little bit, bit low expectations, yeah. but... Well, yeah. Well, I, I know for me that I, I like to consider myself... I'm, I'm a casual comic book fan. I did read them as a kid. I'd never heard of the Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't mm. know who the hell these people were. So um, all I knew is they, they put out a good trailer. Uh, it was interesting. It was a talking, you know, uh, raccoon, raccoon. And there's and a, a tree that kind of walks and talks. And, yeah, certainly something very different. But in Marvel, we trust. So I felt going into this film, trailers look good. We just come off seeing Captain America: The Winter Soldier, which, um, if you watch our last show, we, we gushed about. We absolutely we loved that. So, yeah. mate, it was absolutely uh, very keen to see. Could they move the Marvel Cinematic Universe into space and make it work? That's you know, right. I know Thor was in space, mate, but this one they were going way, way out, out there. Space. But you know what, mate? Let's talk about this. But before we delve into it, let's do, do the, the synopsis. synopsis. All right, brash space adventurer Peter Quill finds himself the quarry of relentless bounty hunters after he steals an orb uh, coveted by Ronan, a powerful villain. To evade Ronan, Quill is forced into an uneasy truce with four desperate misfits, gun-toting rocket raccoon, a tree-like humanoid called Groot, the enigmatic Gamora, and the vengeance-driven Drax the Destroyer. But when he discovers the orb's true power and the cosmic threat it poses, Quill must rally his ragtag group to save the universe. There you go. There you go. That's it. Yeah, it's, it kind of explains it, but it doesn't it explain what this film is because this film is a very visual film. Um, but you know what? Who was in this sucker way back when? Only three years ago, but four years ago. There you go. Okay, Chris Pratt, the chubby guy from Parks That's and Rec. Right. He's Peter Quill, or Star-Lord. Who? Who? Um, Zo Zoe Saldana plays Gamora. Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista. Dave Bautista played Drax the Destroyer. Wow. Vin Diesel does the voice of Groot. Voice. That was an easy paycheck. Uh, Bradley Cooper voices Rocket Raccoon. We have Lee Pace playing the big baddie Ronan. Ronan Michael Destroyer. Rooker. Everyone loves Michael Rooker. Stink palm, anyone? Um, <laughs> Uh, Karen Gillian, cool. um, uh, she plays Nebula. We have John C. Riley in a small role playing a corpseman day. We have Glenn Close playing Nova Prime. Benicio Toro as nice. the collector and Sean Gunn as Kraglin. Now, and the reason I, I mentioned Sean Gunn is that um, I want to mention him now because in the second film, which we review later on, here's a bit more to play. Important to mention him now. Yeah. But that was the cast, That's the cast. of Guardians of the Galaxy. So, this film is such a colourful film to watch, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, it, there's lots of purples and greens and blues and it's reds. It's got that it's real retro 80s feel to it. Really yeah. retro kind of feel to it. And, and you talk yeah. about the, the 80s feel. I mean, the music the in this film is yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. 
And and they really do. It, that becomes a driving force of the film is the music in this. Yeah. You know, what were your thoughts uh, watching this film as it was unfolding? I guess yeah, like walking in the cinema and then like you know you see that opening scene. You, you got this young boy and he's got his little headphones on. and yeah. You listen to a bit of that music and he's kind of like it looks like he's in a hospital. And oh. Then he gets called into his mum and she's That's dying. Heartbreaking. And I'm like, oh. what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. It's like watching is, up. What, again, what, you know, what, what, what's going on? This is like looks nothing like. And I'm like, what direction are we gonna mm. have like this sad movie? What's Marvel doing? And then it just, poof, did a complete 360 the next scene, and it was just on. It, it was, was on, we got a dancing. We got dancing, we got yeah. 80s music, we got Chris Pratt, yeah. you know, doing and, some and, and funny that, shit. And that really sets but, the tone, yeah. doesn't it? It really sets the tone for it. For, for being sure. a real, like, what can I say, a dynamic kind yeah. of film, and it really is, you know? And, and mate, I think what makes this film work is... A lot of it really rests on Chris Pratt's shoulders here. Yeah. He does a great job as Peter Quill. He's, he's a very Han Solo-esque type of character. And some, he's got some elements of him, but um, he's a real adventure Indiana Jones type as well, which is yeah. which is kind of really cool. Um, and and all the the other characters, Zoe Saldana, who who's a good actress in her own right, um, oh, and has been in some big stunner. blockbuster Star Treks and and all that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Other big blockbuster films. She's done some. Yeah. Um, she's really great in this playing Gamora, one of Thanos's uh, adopted daughters. Yeah. Um, and, and really good. Mate, you know what the big surprise of me in this film? And I think you'll agree with me here. Dave Batista. Dave Batista. Yeah. Playing Drax the Destroyer. Fucking standout, definitely. Who knew he was going to be right, so funny? He's funny. Um, he, I mean, he's done some shit movies <laughs> in here, so I'm just throwing out there, all right? He has done some shit movies, and like <laughs> one of them is definitely the remake of Kickboxer. Oh, Kickboxer, just, Kickboxer Avengers. Oh, that was fucking woeful. Oh, um, we won't be doing a review. You know, we will that. not be doing a review on that. Um, but coming into a Marvel movie, he is just, mate. He's on point. He is, and he's That's... comedically funny. Oh, yeah, he's just yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. Oh, well, look, he keeps falling down. I think it's absolutely, he wants to be talked about. Rocket, Rocket Raccoon as a character. Freaking amazing. And I didn't even, like, yeah, like I said, Bradley Cooper as the voice. Oh, I couldn't, I couldn't even couldn't really tell, it. you know. that was, yeah. And it was such a, and, 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 and as I said about the Han Solo character, these two guys, it's yes. Han Solo and Chewie. Yeah. You know, they've got that relationship. You've got Groot, the, the brash risk taker, yeah. kind of, you know, adventurer, uh, who's just out to make a buck. And then you've got Groot, who just basically says, I am Groot. But obviously he means something different each time and only kind of Rocket understands didn't, him. Did, so it's very similar in that way. Didn't Vin Diesel make some big thing about, you know, it was so oh, hard. Oh, we had to like, say... It was so hard to say, yeah. I am Groot, but in different tones. And well, that, they did kind of mention oh, in man. that, 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 sh- that uh, the director, James Gunn, who oh, deserves all the credit in the yes, world yes. for writing a, and directing a fantastic for movie, sure. agree with that. is the fact that he said he wrote a script... With different lines for Groot that only him and Vin Diesel knew. So he would say, I am Groot, but he knew in his head what he meant to say. Yeah. But God, that's got to be the easiest come paycheck on. in the world. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, come on. To know? me, it sounded like he said, I am Groot, like yeah. the same <laughs> way throughout the whole yeah, movie. Yeah, but anyway. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but going back to James Gunn, who directed Amazing. this film and written this film, written this film, is fantastic. I mean, he's a guy that came from Troma days, you know, the, those old. Toxic Avenger, Tromeo and Juliet, uh, Surf Nazis Must Die, all those kind of old cheesy Cheesy schlock straight video films. He started off working that company in the 90s. He got his big break um, probably writing the Scooby-Doo movies, like in a sense that gave him a a way to get in the mainstream. He made a fantastic horror film called Slither. Slither. If you haven't seen Slither, check it out. Fantastic. Um, and super, super, yeah, 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 yeah. That that real independent kind of violent from super the hero. office. Um, uh, and, Dwight uh, Schrute Dwight, is that yeah. right? <laughs> from the office. Rain Wilson, I'm talking yeah. about, of course. So now, nah, and so he, he kind of, and you can see his career progression, and given this opportunity by Marvel, who love taking risks in directors. I mean, Big they risk. just did that with the Russo brothers for Captain America. And how well did that turn out? It, it turned out fantastic. So right. they've given, yeah. uh, they've given, you know, James the, the reins here and said, go make a Guardians of the Galaxy film. And he's just created such a joyous adventure. Um, you know, everybody's just really humming here. There's great chemistry between the characters. The plot, well, 
The plot's pretty um, standard. It's, yeah. But I don't think she should have complicated it either because because this film is so much about the characters and the and the comedy and their relationships. I think yes. if you had a complex script, it, it would have taken away from this great little, you know, joyous piece of dessert that we were given with Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. What did you think, Rick? Uh, yeah, look, it's a fun movie. Mm. To me, it's a fun movie. Good comic scenes in it um, and the chemistry amongst everyone and how they all came together. They're all from different parts of the universe, whatever. They all come together, they gel together yeah. and they become a good tight family unit. Yeah. And, and my, I mean, some of my favourite scenes were, I guess, the, the, the escape out of the, the prison. Yeah, like great. That was awesome, you know. Um, Rocket was obviously leading the way and he's telling everyone, I need this, this and this. And then, <laughs> like, he tells Peter, yeah, I need his prosthetic leg from this guy. <laughs> you know, it's like, what do you need a leg for? But, yeah, but, but for yeah. no reason but except he wanted to think how hilarious yes, it would be. That he yeah, can't find so his they leg. get to that point where they put everything together and, and there's Peter holding his leg, like, you know, I've got this leg, what do I do with it? And Rocket's like, oh, I just yeah. want to see your reaction. So, uh, yeah, loved it. It was just, it was a fun movie. Um, everything was just, um, like, special effects were phenomenal. Uh, yeah, it yeah, I mean, that was really, top, really good. Top notch. With top that. notch. We, it was the first time we saw Thanos. Uh, well, the first time we had heard with Thanos Thanos's talk. Talk. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. is a big one. Because remember, we'd seen him do his little grin at the end of the Avengers, but we actually have dialogue scenes with him yeah, in this one. Yeah, so. it's really, And it's the first time Josh Brolin yes. did motion capture. Um, yeah. And obviously, Infinity War is coming up where he will play a massive role in it. Some of my favourite bits, Rick, thinking about it. I love, um, certainly that prison scene was great. I love the whole scene inside the giant severed head floating in space. Oh, yes, yes. And it's yep. kind of like everyone lives there is mining the spinal fluid. Yep. Yeah, it's called Nowhere, I think. I love that. I love the scene with the collector. I thought Benicio he was knocked awesome. it out of the park. And you can see he was having so much fun um, playing that little role. And just everybody, you know, that, that kind of popped in and out of the movie. Mm. Like John C. Riley was always fun to watch. Uh, Peter Savanovic playing, um, uh, I didn't mention him in the cast, but he's the guy that said, what a bunch of a-holes. He's really good in it. Um, yeah, Glenn Close. Glenn yeah, Close. Yeah, yeah. And an Academy Award uh, nominated and I believe winning actress. You know, in a Marvel film. In a Marvel film. film. They're doing it, aren't they? I mean, you had Robert Redford last time. Yeah, that's right. They're You've got, the guns. you know, Glenn Close this time. They just keep bringing out the big guns. But um, overall, I, I, oh, mate, this is so much fun. This is the rewatchability factor on this film is through the roof. You can oh, watch sure. this film any time and always have a smile on your face yeah. while you're watching it. You know? It's an enjoyable movie. It's a fun movie. You kind of mentioned about family earlier, too. And I really want to touch on, I think, what's, what's really sweet about this film is the fact that they've all come from broken... Situations, you yeah. know, with Peter losing his mum and then being kidnapped, and whether it's uh, Paul Rocket who's been experimented on, and and Groot not knowing where he's from, and Drax Destroyer losing his family, and and Gamora trying to get away from Thanos, Thanos you know, yeah. um, and even her relationship with uh, Nebula, her sister. Her, her sister. So, look, it's really great, and how they come together, and I mean, they literally. Mm. Join hands and the end as a family yeah. to save the world. Yeah, that's right. Which is kind of nice too, because in the beginning of the film, Peter as a child refuses to grab his mum's hand because he doesn't want to accept the fact that his mum's going to die. But and it pays off in a great way. Music's fantastic. Film's a lot of fun. Mate, I'm going to rate this film. I'm, 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 I'm way too excited any, not to have to rate this any, film. Anything bad about it? Did you find anything that... Look, I think I kind of mentioned or? it with the fact that the plot's fairly simplistic. I think that, look, yeah. if, I, if I'm going to pick on, I've got to pick on the villain again. But it's like, this is like shooting fish like in a barrel, he wasn't, on the villains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Marvel continue to str struggle with that. But Marvel about its characters, not its villains. Uh, rightly or wrongly. So, yeah, I, you know, I've got a few issues here and there with it, but... Overall, Overall, when you're watching that film, you're having so much fun. To nitpick a film like this is probably not the right film for you then. I mean, if you want to nitpick that film on that level, if you're a hardcore like yeah. comic book fan, just be thankful. Did you ever think in your world there would be a Guardian of the Galaxy movie? Here it That's is. That's right. And it's a lot of fun. Mate, I'm going to rate right. it. I've got to rate what it. What are you rate right? it? You know what, this one, I, I reckon this one's a, this is an 8 out of 10 for me. Eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. I think that's. A, I think that's a fair score. Eight's a solid I don't number. think it, it, it hits the highs of the Winter Soldier or the Avengers. Oh, yeah. No. But it's there. I mean, it's it's 
You know, it's probably for me around the Captain America, the first Avenger kind of. Yeah. You know, which I gave eight point five, but I'll give this one an eight. What do you think, mate? Eight sort number. Um, yeah, look, loved it. Loved the cast. I loved the. the I loved everything about this mm. movie. Um, I just, I, I enjoyed myself when I walked out of that cinema. I'm like, yeah, no worries, you Marvel, you've definitely earned my money because that was just an awesome movie. Um, so unexpected. It just, yeah, it was, and that's, and I guess going in there not knowing anything about the character thing like that, I think it was really good going into the cinema like that, mm. and and it, and it paid off, and yeah, loved it. So for me. Um, I'm going to have to say um, eight and a half. Wow, eight and a half. Eight and yeah, a half. so it's right yeah, up there for up you, there. Ricky. For isn't me, it? Yeah, yeah, brilliant, for sure. brilliant. So, I, look, I look. I don't think anybody could have walked out of the film and said they hated it. I don't I mean, think, I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone I've spoken to has said that they've hated this movie. No, everyone loves it. Or I mean, said a like, bad thing about it. How could movie? you not love Groot? You know, and yeah. and we kind of like we didn't mention that. Although I want to mention it before we move on is the like just the, the genius of having. Poor Groot die at the end, but then reborn as a baby as a inside baby. that little pot. What a funny scene that was. And there's some good scenes, yeah, at the end. Well, that's the one at the end. Yeah. With with Batista and, yeah. and, and you know, he's sharpening yeah. his knife and then they're doing that little dance and then he's, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. Ah, it's good stuff, I reckon. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's good. Great time at the movies and thank God Enjoyable. we live in the era of Marvel. Yeah. All right. So we move on next week, Rick. All right, we move on to... We're back with the Avengers again. We are. Avengers Age of Ultron. Ultron. Whew. This time they're bringing one of the classic villains, the classic comic book villains, especially in the Avengers world, onto the big screen. So, uh, mate, we will be getting to that next time. Definitely stay tuned But for until that. then, guys, we want you to talk to us about what you thought of Guardians of the Galaxy. And how do they do that, Rick? So what you guys can do is obviously hit that like button if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button as well. Um, comment below, um, give us some comments if you like this video, if you like Guardians of the Galaxy, who was your favourite character, whatever you want to say, chuck it on there. And follow us on the um, social media sites, we've got them all down there. Hit us up guys, we appreciate it. We love it. to hear from you. That's all it. Right. So until next, guy, next time guys, remember, nothing goes over my head, I'm too fast, I will catch it. <laughs>